Data, data, data. Sometimes we don't want to know why things are working in our business. We just want to know that they are working, right? And what data does a business owner need to have versus a marketer? Let's geek out over data today with today's guest in the 100th episode of Strategy Talks. I'm ready. If you are, let's do it. Let's strategize together. Let's hear it from an expert. Join the conversation. It's informative and free. You and me, let's talk some strategy. Here's your host, Doreen Morin Van Dam. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Strategy Talks. And believe it or not, this is episode 100. I am so excited. I actually forgot to tell my guest, so he's sitting in the green room and didn't know this surprise. But anyway, we're going to be geeking out over data. What better episode to geek out over data when you look back at 100 episodes, right? So without much further ado, I want to welcome all of you to Strategy Talks. If you're here live Um, Thank you for being with us. If you want to put in the comments where you're watching from, if you're watching this on the replay, put hashtag replay in the comments so my guests and myself can look at those comments. And last but not least, for those of you who are listening to Strategy Talks as a podcast, welcome to you as well. So I am going to welcome onto the stage my friend Andre. Andre is from Social Insider. He's actually one of the co-founders. And Andre, welcome. I forgot to tell you this was the 100th episode. Surprise! (laughs) Yeah, really happy to join in. And it's a quite nice surprise that this is the 100th episode. So congrats on that. Thanks. It's, It's a milestone, yeah. It is. And it would be, it's, it makes a lot of sense. We're going to talk about data and we're going to talk about a lot of data that you have, but the data that I have keeps me moving, right? My data tells me that people watch, people come to me and say, your episodes have made an impact. Um, now I'm starting to get pitches from people saying, Hey, I want to be on your podcast because it's ranking well, right? So the data is telling me and the people are telling me that this podcast is working and doing exactly what I wanted to do, but enough about me, Andre, tell us a little bit about social insider and what it does, because listen, if you guys are marketers or business owners, you really do need social insider. So he's going to tell us a little bit more about the company. Okay. So Social Insider is a simple and straightforward social media analytics tool that's going to offer you the ability to analyze your your channels. But on top of that, you're going to be able to compare performance across channels, get competitor insights, do benchmarks, compare your performance versus the the industry. Um, We're basically picking up all the social data and creating a picture for marketers so that they can adjust their strategy, they can understand what their competitors are doing, uh, they can use it for pitches. Uh, Basically, it's going to bring in a whole universe of social media data so you can dig through and find what's going to work for you and your brand in the specific niche that you're in. Okay. And you are guys are in a new company, even though you might, do you consider yourself still a new company? You've been around for a while. So sometimes when... Because we have a habit of talking about ourselves as a new company, uh, we're always saying, so we're kind of young in the market, but looking back, it's been almost seven years since we have been doing this. So we've been digging through data for a lot of time. Okay, so that's awesome. So the, the question that I have, and this is, I think, a great place to start. Some of the people that are watching with us today or are listening to this podcast are business owners. They might have a marketing team that needs data, but business owners need data too. Do you have any way to distinguish like what is the minimum kind of data that a business owner needs versus what a marketer need? I know your target audience are marketers because they're presenting to the business owner, but you might've learned from the marketers. What is it that the business owners need? Because from my experience is business owners oftentimes get overwhelmed if you present them with too much data. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? 
Yeah, so of course, marketers are going to be more data and they're going to go in depth into each and every small KPI that they think affects their marketing efforts, their social efforts. Um, now, as a business owner, you're going to have to wear many hats and you're going to have to make a lot of decisions and you can't really focus on every detail because you're going to get overwhelmed with data because now marketing is going to be just one of the uh, funnels of data towards the business owner. He's going to get data from financial. He's going to get data from a lot of other sources. So in terms of marketing uh, or social media in particular, he's going to want some top level figures. Now, in terms of what we've seen from our clients, generally um, upper management is interested in like top numbers. Reach was is and was a very important number. Now, with the addition of video platforms that kind of focus on views slash impressions, views has come up as a very important metric to report on. And now, engagement is up there with the metrics, but as a comparison with the previous performance. So okay. they would be measuring engagement rates just to make sure we're on an upward trend, but not going down in terms of engagement. So this is where a lot of our, questions, our clients' questions come from. So they see we have a drop in engagement, what's happening? And we, we looked into the data, we create studies. Okay, over time, engagement seems to be decreasing on platforms because they nudge you towards paid. So your organic performance is gonna drop slowly over time, but you're gonna get uh, more impact in paid if you spend more. Now, this might allow marketers to justify spending towards upper management. Uh, these are like the three KPIs that are really important for, that we've seen are important for management. So reach impressions and engagement or engagement rates. Um, now, there are specific metrics. If you think about like a marketing funnel through social, like they measure conversions or website visits that come from social. So for e-commerce brands, these are really, really important. Uh, with Social Insider, we can only go that far. So we can see the number of clicks or something and social media posts. But now in terms of conversions, you're going to have to bridge the gap with your analytics solution from your e-commerce or website or um, I know what solution you're using, but you're going to have to bridge the gap into real conversions or sales. Okay. That's uh, that's awesome. So that's that's a good, so that's what, I love that you said that, that the owners, the CEOs, the C-suite just need to have that overview, right? They just need to have an overall picture of where were we, where are we going? They need a growth and engagement. They don't want to see the dips, but they don't need all the nitty gritty. What are some things that marketers really dig into um, as far as data? So there's marketers and marketers. We've seen, so the, the, the most interesting marketers we've worked with are the, the ones that are really nitty picky about all the numbers. So they want to see for each post, what's the performance, how that how does that evolve? Uh, because there are uh, these marketers want to do want to have the best strategy in place. So they're going to look at every detail of every data point that signifies that their content was good. And if they see that their content is kind of not working on social, they're going to adjust quickly. They're not going to wait for a month to create end of month reports or quarterly reports for management to spot a problem. So they're gonna be in the analytics solution all the time, playing, looking through the data, sifting through all the posts, categorizing them and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Now they're looking at, uh, there's like comments, shares. These are really important for some of the marketers because they're amplifying metrics. So likes are good as engagement or reactions are good as engagement, but like comments, shares are much more important. They create some, um, amp they amplify right. the, the, the reach, they amplify the metrics of the post. So they're looking, they're looking for those. And some of the, some of the marketers we work with specifically create content that should drive shares or comments. I, I guess everybody's seen that brand communication has changed into a more like personal thing and they're trying to uh, start a conversation with their audience because this creates, besides the metrics that you've seen, you're going to see in the dashboard that you're going to 
I don't know, in your analytics tool, you're going to see more comments. It's going to also help you uh, because your audience is really, really well engaged. And the well engaged audience is more likely to convert or become advocates for your brand. Right. That makes that makes a lot of sense. So marketers really care about shares and comments because that amplifi amplifies the brand voice. That makes a lot of sense. Right. So when we were talking um, earlier to, you know, this week, um, you mentioned that um, there was a, uh, that you had a couple studies and one of them got picked up by social media today. This was a LinkedIn study. Can you talk a little bit about that? I have a link that I'm going to pull up. Let me see if I can pull it up. It's right here. It's socialinsider.io. It's LinkedIn benchmarks. Um, I'll leave that up for a minute so people can uh, grab it if they want to. If you're listening to this, it's uh, socialinsider.io forward slash blog forward slash LinkedIn dash benchmarks. Um, I'll put it in the show notes as well, of course. Um, can you talk a little bit about this specific um, case study? Because I think it highlights kind of what you were talking about, what, you know, that the algorithm is doing something, people are getting less reach on, on LinkedIn. Uh, did you do it because people, you heard people started kind of freaking out about LinkedIn? Uh, no. uh, basically, we have traditionally done studies for uh, meta platforms, so Facebook and Instagram quite regularly. And when looking at Facebook and Instagram, we've seen uh, constant decreases in engagement rates. And now clients uh, and prospects were asking, okay, but what about LinkedIn? How are things going on LinkedIn? And we figured out this is worth exploring. We have the data. Uh, why not uh, look into it? And we had a, quite a nice surprise because on LinkedIn, the engagement rate actually grew. So LinkedIn is an up and coming platform like TikTok was some while back when they, when they, uh, became bigger. So in terms of the engagement rate, year over year, there's been a 44% increase in engagement rates. So it's, I think this is both because people are trying, starting to take LinkedIn seriously in terms of brand communication, and they, they do more efforts in uh, creating engaging content. But I think the platform's also like pushing this kind of content um, layer for businesses as opposed to just being a personal place for you to grow your personal brand. Now, what we looked at was also what kind of posts do work well, because one of the most common questions is, okay, but I get it. We should post more on LinkedIn, but what should we post? So in a study, uh, like carousel-like posts, we call them multi-image posts, uh, tend to generate more uh, likes and comments on LinkedIn. Uh, if you are looking for shares, then videos are going to be uh, what works best. And um, yeah, if, you, if you're looking for impressions, so getting your content, getting your brand in front of a lot of people, polls work uh, best. Now, this, so we did this study as a broad study. So it's based on uh, LinkedIn pages from different industries, different geographies, different sizes. So we provide this to our clients and our uh, visitors too as a kind of guideline, look through it and apply what works well for your brand. It, it, it isn't that costly to experiment with some takeaways from a study. So like do more videos, see if your shares increase, but not any type of video. So maybe look into what other players in your niche, in your industry do in terms of videos, because maybe they have a good video strategy. And you can see that maybe they do like CEO kind of posts or they do like nice flashy visuals for a product. So you should, you should always tailor to your audience when creating content. But in terms of rough guidelines, these work. So it's clear in the data that videos get more shares on LinkedIn on average. So uh, it should be an, I, the way people use this actually is that, so we have a marketer that's using the tool, reading the study, and then he says, his manager probably says, we want better performance on LinkedIn. And he's gonna go research, do some research online, find the study and then say, okay, we found the study. It says videos are 
the most shared, if we want to increase shares, can we please create a video strategy or get a budget for a video strategy? And this is how it all ties up, up to upper management. And they are going to say, OK, let's do that. And they're going to experiment. And they're going to see the results. And uh, the marketer is going to be happy because he increased the brand presence. And the, the manager is going to be happy because they reached the target APIs. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Now, I want to bring something up that you know you, you that you just said about looking to your competition and seeing what they're doing and you know looking, for example, videos, right? So there is this push to you know stand out and be unique on social. Of course, we need to. You need to be your own self. So when you look to your competitors, you want to not only see what they're doing, and you want to create your own strategy based on what you're doing, but you don't necessarily want to do what they're doing, correct? Yes, correct. <laughs> so it's it's not copying what your competitors are doing. It's about, I mean, all people learn through imitation, like babies. They see other and they do they do the same kind of thing, but in a different way. Right. So this is exactly my point. You're going to look at your competitors, but you're not going to copy their copy or copy their image templates or copy the content that they do. That's going to be a bad idea. You're going to just understand why they did it that way and then create a version of that that's really personal and that really represents you, right? But like at the limit, as a like a border case, if you are only doing text posts on LinkedIn and you're going to look at your competitors and they're doing all these fancy documents and photos and stuff, maybe you should ask yourself a question, well, am I on the right track? But it's not about copying the content of competitors, but more of learning what works on the platform for your specific industry and then adjusting your uh, own strategy by using your own tone of voice, by using your own personal values towards the what works on the platform. That makes a lot of sense. I just wanted to clarify that because I do think that people who are just starting out in marketing, um, there's this group of people that are like, well, everybody's using this trending music, I need to use this, or everybody's doing this, I need to do this. And, you know, I often say to my clients, if four clients, if we're doing a competitor's analysis and four of them are going right, we're going to go left because we don't want to be the fifth one in that group of people. We want to do things differently, but you do want to know what they're doing. You want to look at formats and types of content, but then yeah. we're going to make it very, very different. There was another thing that you um, had shared with me that really works. Um, the usefulness of competitors analysis and campaign optimization. Um, those are some features that you have in your um, platform, correct? You can do a competitors analysis and then yeah. the benchmarking piece. You also did a study about benchmarking. Now, this is a question that's come up with me and important meetings with clients where we're, we're reporting to the C-suite and they're look, oh, these numbers are great, but how are we compared to other people in our industry? It is one of the number one questions. And if you have gotten this question or if you're a business owner and you've gotten this question, Andre and Social Insider have the answer. So what's the answer? How do we do this? So basically, there's two types of getting the context. Basically, marketers need to measure their, their own things, and they need the context. Because they, they're in a the market, they're in a the niche, there there are other players in the market. So with Social Insider, you can do that, of course, with benchmarking. We call it, it's called benchmarks in, in the tool. Uh, basically, you're going to be able to add all your competitors and see where you stand versus uh, what their performance is. Uh, now, what I've seen, I mean, this is this is really important for marketers as a way of proving that what they did was good. Or if the performance was low, as a way of getting more budgets. Um, so we've seen these two separate cases. But generally, marketers are going to bring in all the competitors in their niche and create a report for the performance. Now, it's rare that you're going to be the best on all platforms, on all channels <laughs> from the list. Now, you might have started later. You might not have focused on a specific platform. So you're going to see places where you're better than your competitors and places where you stand lower than your competitors. But that's fine because you're going to be, I mean, your strategy is going to focus on a specific uh, platform. And on that specific platform, we're going to be able to say, okay, we're better than them at, at engagement. We post a lot less. Our posts get a lot more engagement, though. 
Uh, we're doing a fantastic job here. Now, what we're lacking is we're not looking at TikTok enough. And if I do the competitor analysis and realize that TikTok is really working in our niche in terms of engagement or something, then even though you look as an, I don't know, you, as a low performer on TikTok in the benchmark, this can help you open up a discussion about prioritizing certain channels, prioritizing budget, prioritizing uh, creating creator efforts to get more results from a specific platform that your competitors are already tapping into. Um, yeah, so marketers often use benchmarks to prove that the strategy that they did provided results. And if they didn't meet the mark on a specific platform, they're going to understand why. And probably in the next iteration, when they update their strategy and they discuss with management, they're going to be able to address that specific um, pain point in their strategy. All right. But now, if you don't have the data, so if you're if you're in blind, you can never do these kinds of decisions, adjustments. If you're only looking at what you do, maybe you're growing month over month, but is your growth enough? Or if you're decreasing in terms of engagement, is it something that I did? Is it the platform that's doing something? Is it me? So all these questions are going to float around you and you're not going to have something for management when they're going to ask you that. Right. You're going to say like, we did a good job. I don't know. <laughs> but when you bring in all the context from the data, you're going to be able to, to have a, a really strong point uh, in any discussion that you're going to have. Right. So this is the strategy talks piece, guys. And uh, Sarah is here. She said, hi, Adina. Adina is here. Um, she's saying hi to both you and me for the 100th episode. This is what strategy is, guys. Anytime I do a social media strategy, I look at competitors. I create a competitor's analysis. And you can't just do that once a year. You need to keep an eye on your competitors at all times. And that's where Social Insider comes in. And then being able to benchmark yourself, not just about against those few competitors, but also some industry benchmarks, which is what you created a report for, right? A case study. Um, yeah. What are some of the industries that you looked at? And I think I pulled it up if you don't have it pulled up, um, Andre. Um, I, I, I always have my data ready. So <laughs> it's good. Uh, of course so you do. So what kind of industries? Because this is it, guys. Marketers, listen up. Put your listening ears on. Um, there's some, this report, you need this if you have clients in multiple industries. So we're doing our best to cover uh, the major industries. So it's a list of 22 industries that we cover. Uh, we do have education, fashion, fast-moving customer goods, uh, healthcare, uh, media companies, retail companies, uh, telecom companies, travel, software, so uh, airlines, um, automotive brands. So it's going to cover as much of the, the the industries as we can. Now, if you do, we can go in depth and you can have very specific industries, but there's not going to be enough data for very specific industries. So we have these kind of bigger industries that we cover and most of the brands we've worked with and most of the marketers can pick up from, they can they can identify with one of the industries we do studies for. Now, in the past, we've had people ask us, hey, I really love your studies, but do you have something for this specific industry? And frankly, if it makes sense, we're going to add it to the next benchmark study. So if you have an industry that's not covered in our study, uh, maybe in our next quarter, we can add it as an industry there. So I think we added jewelry brands uh, recently at the request of uh, some of our uh, visitors. All right, awesome. I'm just adding the um, banner right here. It's socialinsider.io blog forward slash social media benchmarks. So if you wanna check it out, it's really been helpful for me. I go in there anytime. I have a lead in a new industry that I haven't worked in, or if um, I have a question from somebody in an industry, or even uh, when I talk to an expert in an industry that I haven't really talked to, um, just to see what's going on in that industry, right? Because you know, at this point, 13 years in my career, 
I worked in a lot of different industries um, as a marketer, uh, but I like I have not worked in jewelry, for example, or airlines. So, you know, <laughs> if I got a lead from that, I would definitely go to the study and uh, check it out. And it's definitely a frequently asked question that I see in some of the uh, Facebook groups that I'm active in with other social media marketers. Um, they want to benchmark um, mark their company or their clients against something. So this is this is super helpful. So Andre, we've got just a few minutes left. What if you if you were to talk to somebody who doesn't have data, a business owner or a marketer? How do you talk to them about data, the importance of data? Because, you know, for for years, I'm an organic specialist, right? So I, I post something and, and, you know, initially it was a lot of local companies and the results would come because somebody would walk into a store and say, oh, I saw a Facebook post. So here's my discount code, right? This is the olden days of social media. It was a lot of local stuff. Now it's different, right? You're reaching, you know, you're really reaching people all over the world. Um, you need data to grow. There's a lot more competition, a lot more platforms. What do you say to somebody that might be hesitant about data or thinks data is not fun or um, data is hard? What do you say to somebody like that? So, I mean, we had the painful realization about data as well in the, in the past years. As a business owner, you can't grow you can't improve something that you don't measure, something you don't have data for. So if you don't have the data, you can't realistically ask for somebody to grow something if, if you're not measuring it. So data might not be fun. It might be complicated to sift through tons of data like Excel files or stuff like that. So, but as a business owner, you're going to need the data because you're gonna make decisions and your intuition or your gut feeling are gonna take you this far, but at some point you're gonna need the data to, uh, to do your decision making process. So, okay, maybe you don't like data, maybe data isn't fun for you, you're more of a doer, you're not really into thinking, but find a way of packaging the data that you can work with. Maybe you don't need to look at 20 KPIs per day Maybe you're going to look at five really North Star metrics per month for social and let those guide you through growth or the decision process and in investing more or uh, getting more results. Frankly, you can't get more results without looking at the data because you can't steer a ship if you're not looking where you're going. So if the data isn't coming in, you're driving blindly. Uh, so you need to get the data. You also need to develop some trust for the data. So it's not enough that you get the data. You need to trust the data and understand that the data is going to be real and it will help you create like a, like a prediction for uh, what, what you're aiming at. So getting the data and matching with your uh, prediction or, or your intentions is going to help you out trust the data. And yeah, it's a, it's a really important process. Every business owner needs to go through. So it's, I, I feel like in the past, maybe I would have said, eh, but now it's a non-negotiable for me. So as a business owner, you need to get the data. So we just celebrated that in the past month, we got over 1000 new followers on our LinkedIn page. So that's fantastic. If we weren't measuring that, uh, maybe it would have been, yeah, and it wouldn't have been a success story, right? right? Because if you're looking at something, you want to influence that something, and you want to grow that, and you want to make it better than it was before. So you need the data to to stay on track. That makes sense. And I'm going to say this: if you're a business owner and you and I know you're obsessed with the data of your uh, revenue, get as obsessed with the data about your marketing as you are with your revenue, <laughs> because that's the data that you're probably looking at. Go look at the marketing data too, because it will influence the revenue data. So I just wanted to put that in there. Andre, how can people find you specifically? And then how is what's the best way to introduce them to Social Insider? So basically they can find me on LinkedIn. Andre, uh, I think you can, my name is a bit, uh, uh, hard to uh, remember, but maybe there can be like a little link. I'll put a link, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can 
always message me on LinkedIn and I'll do my best to answer. If it's a data question, if it's a whatever question, I'm going to be able to answer. In terms of getting to, to play around with Social Insider, you can always go to our website and start a free trial. Uh, or if you'd like us to just take you through the app, you can always book a demo and either me or a colleague of mine is going to take you through the product. So you're going to get to understand what the most important features are. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being my guest on a 100th episode. Um, thank you to those who were here live and cheering us on. That was really fun. Um, I'll be back next week with another episode of Strategy Talk. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And Andre, thank you so much for uh, being my guest today. Bye, everybody. Um.